Greetings. Today we're going to start a project to build a complete infrastructure for a small to medium sized school or small to medium sized business. We are going to build this with three components. One we're going to have at the top of the stack here we have a, a sonic wall and below that we have an Aruba 7010 wireless controller and below that we have a HP slash Aruba 2530 24 port switch. Taking a closer look at our network stack, we've currently configured and connected the LAN port, which is X0 on the sonic wall, to switch port number 24 on the uh, HP switch. Also connected into the HP switch uh, in port 1 is the connection to the computer that I'll be using to configure uh, the sonic wall with. We have yet to connect the uh, Aruba 7010 controller. Uh, we'll do that uh, much later. All of these devices are in their basic new condition. The only uh, changes that I have made prior to the start of this tutorial is that I did change the IP address on X0 to 172.16.0.1 from the default just because I like that numbering sequence or that IP range as my base just for my own personal satisfaction and you can use anything that you like. Before we start configuring our hardware we need to map out what our user base is going to look like, how we can segment them into smaller groups for security purposes. In a typical school, we would have, let's just switch to our whiteboard here. In a typical school, we would have teachers, we would have students, and we would also have guests. And this is how we're going to lay out or segment our network. And we do this by creating what are called VLANs. So for our example, we're going to say VLAN 10 is going to be for our teachers. Our students are going to be VLAN 20. And for our guests, we'll just call that VLAN 30. VLANs are great. They keep similar traffic local to its VLAN and it provides a barrier wall for security between different groups of people. Let's explore the idea of VLANs real quick. So in our infrastructure we have three VLANs. We have our teacher VLAN which is VLAN 10. We have our students which is VLAN 20 and we have our guests which is VLAN 30. Again, the nice thing about VLANs is that if there's broadcast traffic in here, it doesn't move to any of the other VLANs. So we need to apply a couple of rules to how our traffic is going to move between these VLANs, and that's what the SonicWell defines as a zone. So in our case, we're going to define our VLAN 10 as zone LAN. And our students and guests, we're going to define those as DMZs. Now the sonic well says, hey, any information that the, this LAN person wants, say, that, for example, there's a printer located on VLAN 20 that the teachers need to print to. The zone says anything from a LAN zone can access something in a DMZ zone. However, the reverse is not true. So if a student who is running Kali Linux on his Chromebook or whatever tries to get in to something on VLAN 10, the sonic wall says, no, that is not allowed. These same things apply to guests. You don't see printers and things on a DMZ on a guest network, but should you have that, the LAN zone 
can access that, but the guest network cannot access this device. So let's start configuring our VLANs. To do so, we click on Select Interface Type. We want a virtual interface. We'll make this a little bit bigger. The zone we want for our teachers is VLAN 10. The VLAN tag is 10. The parent interface is X0. The IP address will be 10.0.10.1. And the comment will be teacher. We'll allow the teachers to manage the sonic wall. And users can log in if that's needed. We'll set up the students. Virtual interface. Make this a little bigger. Zone is DMZ. VLAN is 20. Interface is 0. 10.0.20.1. Comment student. They don't need to log in to manage the sonic wall, and we probably don't need them to log in as a user on the sonic wall either. And lastly, we'll set up our guest network. Make this a little bit bigger again. Zone is going to be DMZ. 30. The parent interface is X0. And it's 10.0.30.1. And this is our guest. Again, they don't need to manage or have user logins. And our VLANs are all set up. So let's just review our setup. We have X0, our base or PID um, subnet is 172.16.0.1. And you may say, well, what's that good for? That's where we're gonna keep all of our switches um, and our Aruba controller, our sonic wall is there. Um, that's gonna be where we're gonna store those devices. Then we're re gonna review our, we've got our teacher subnet our uh, VLAN setup and our guest and our students. But then we think, oh, you know, we actually have a lot of students. We have 400 students. And we look and we see our subnet mask is set at 255.255.255.0. And that might not be enough. So let's change that so that we can actually have more student devices connecting to our network. That's an easy fix. We'll just change our subnet mask to 255.255.254.0. That should allow about 500 devices in this particular VLAN. And that should be plenty for our school of 400. And you can make it bigger if you so need to. Um, then what we'll want to do is we'll just want to double check and make sure what is going to be our range of IP addresses that are going to be acceptable to us in that student VLAN. And we'll just use a free tool on the internet called IB Calculator. And as you can see here, I have 10. Dot, I guess I need to change that to 10.20 for our students. So, our usable network here is going to be 10.0.20.1, and our max hosts can go up to 10.0.21.254. Now, when we go back to our sonic wall, we'll just double check that our students have a subnet mask of 255.255.254. Dot zero. Our next step will be to set up our DHCP server so that when you plug in a device onto your network, the DHCP server will give from a pool of IP addresses 
an IP address to the device that wants to connect on. When we're creating our network in each segment, it's kind of nice to have a mental map of how the IP addresses are going to lay out in that range. And to do that, let's just switch over to the whiteboard. So for our teachers, we're going to break it into three groups. The lower end of the range, we'll say this will be 10.0.10.0.0.0. Up to something around dot 50 and in that range we're going to just kind of carve out for our static IPs and that would include printers copiers servers because they really like to have a static IP address the next block of IP addresses is going to be our pool. And that will be 10.0.10.51 all the way up to .249. And this is going to be our DHCP. So when somebody plugs a device in, the DHCP server will hand them a number between 10.0.10.51 and 10.0.10.249. The last group, this is going to be our others. <laughs> kind of didn't leave a lot of space there. I There's just going to be a few numbers up here from dot... 250 to 254 and I have used them in the past for VPN connections generally don't need very many connections at once troubleshoot from a remote area or a teacher needs to beam in and get something from a, a server or she wants to print something to a local device that would allow them to DHCP in so back to our configuration screen and we will set them up. First up we have our teachers. We'll add a dynamic and the start range will be 10.0.10.2 to 10.0.10.2. 249 just like we said the default gateway is going to be the sonic well itself which the instance is going to be 10.0.10.1 and the subnet mask is 255.255.255.0 we'll want to set up a dns so that way they can access these Google DNS servers at 8.8.4.4 and 8.8.8.8 .8 and we'll save that and the first one is done. Oops, I forgot to leave my carved out spot in the front. So we're going to change that start range to 50. Next up, we have our students. As you recall, we can have a much bigger pool. Our start range is going to be 10.0.20.50. Our end range will be 10.0.21.230. We'll leave ourselves a little extra headroom. Again, we're going to make the default gateway the sonic wall itself. 10.0.20.1 subnet mask 255.255.254.0 this is the students 
And again, we'll just specify this manually, our DNS servers, and say OK. And last but not least, we'll do the guests. This is 10.0.30. Again, we don't have printers here, so we will make this down at the bottom. 10.0.30. That. 250 10 10.0.30.1 which is the sonic wall 255.255.255.0 again we'll change the DNS's here to manual click OK <coughs> and then we can review these we know we've done it right because it automatically associates the IP range with the actual interface. And we can see that is defined here. So we have our DNS DHCP all done. Our sonic wall is all set to rock and roll. In part two, the next video, we'll set up VLANs on our HP 2530 and get traffic flowing and test out some of the ports to make sure that the right IP address is coming out of the right ports. So until then, thanks for watching.